Okay, in this video, we're going to cover um, 5.2. And um, this section is now going to introduce what a logarithmic function is. Okay, now bear with me. This one is pretty lengthy because it is a whole new concept. You guys know how to raise numbers to other um, number exponents. That's not, you know, that bad to do. Plus, we have our calculator to help us. So it's not all that awful. However, when it comes to um, logarithmic functions, this is a whole new idea. So the whole Aladdin, right? A whole new world. Yes, this is it. Okay. Excuse my singing. I'm not great. <laughs> but that's exactly what's going on in my brain. Okay. This is completely different. It is something new that you might not have ever heard of. You might have heard the word logarithmic, but what it actually means, um, you might not have heard of, okay? So we're gonna go over the introduction of it, and then, of course, we're gonna do stuff with this concept, right? So it says, remember that this function right here, the exponentials, those passed the horizontal line test, okay? Which means they did have an inverse, okay? That was the only requirement in the past for your function to have an inverse, was for it to um, was for it to pass the horizontal line test. So since the exponential do pass the horizontal line test, that means they do have an inverse. And believe it or not, the inverse of an exponential is a logarithmic. Okay, why? Because a logarithmic is a fancy way of saying the exponent. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna start with the definition and this definition we are going to be using a lot. So just keep that in mind that that's not gonna go away. You're gonna to have to be able to convert back and forth between the two forms. This statement is equivalent and says the exact same thing as this statement, okay? You are used to seeing it like this except you might have been used to seeing it as y equals a to the x, okay? Doesn't matter what letters you choose. I don't even like to use uh, x's and y's because that completely confuses everyone. So what I like to use is I like to say um, my base I always say a equals b c. And when I switch it over into the log form, it's going to be log with the same base. And then these are going to switch. Actually, I do it the other way around. I do it like this. B to the A equals C. Okay. And the reason why I do it like that is because B for base. And then when you take the log of something, you actually have, it's called an argument. Okay. Um, and so I like to use A for argument. And then you get C. Oh, no, I had to write the first time. I'm getting myself confused. Let me get my right letters. And then that's equivalent. Now they're equivalent statements. Okay. So I like to use it in this form, um, but not everyone does. So just keep in mind that it doesn't matter what letters you use. What matters is, is where the letters are. Okay, so notice that in your log form, this is called your base, this little subscript, okay? It's not a superscript like an exponent, it's a subscript down low, like a, um, it's called subscript, okay? So it's down low, kind of like an exponent below instead of high. Now that's called your base, okay? And this guy here is called your argument. So A is the base and X is the argument. So notice that when you read it, it's log base A of X, okay? Um, and in the exponential, notice what happens here. The base is still A of the exponential, and then these two guys swap sides. So originally the X was on the same side as the Y, as the A, but now the Y is on the same side as the A, and the X is on the other side, okay? So the base will stay the base, but the other two values will swap sides on the equal sign, okay? So if I have this like this and I wanna convert it over to a log, remember it's gonna be log with this same base 
And then instead of the C being on the same side as the base, it's gonna be on the other side. And so notice that over here, it's on the other side. And so now the A is on the same. Now I really need to point this out because I will have people writing log base A, whatever, anything. When you write this log and A, the argument need to be on the same line. Okay, same kind of font. Even the equal C part is all in the same font. It's the B only that becomes a subscript down here, okay? So you have to be careful. This should all be in the same font on the same line. The only one that's different is the subscript. Just like when you're doing uh, regular equations, the only thing that looks different is the exponents. Those are the only ones that are tiny and lifted up. Now, when you're talking about logs, the only thing that should be tiny and scooted down is that uh, base, okay? So be very, very careful when you're writing these. I'll have people do this, and this is wrong. This does not mean the same thing as this, okay? So you cannot write it like that. Okay, now let's keep going with that um, thing. So it says these equations are equivalent, okay? The first equation is called the logarithmic form, and the second equation is called the exponential form. So for example, if you have an equation that looks like this, two equal to log three of nine, that's equivalent to the same base three, and instead of having nine attached, it's gonna have two attached. So when it becomes an exponential, it's gonna have the base three with the two attached, and then notice the nine is on the other side, okay? Similarly, if I wanna go in the other direction, I wanna start with an exponential, and I wanna get to a logarithmic, it's gonna be log with this base five, and then these two numbers swap sides. So the three will no longer be on the same side as the five. So now it's log base five of the 125 with the three on the other side, okay? It says, when evaluating the logarithms, remember that a logarithm is an exponent. Notice it says that this log is equal to y, and what is y over here? It's the exponent. So logarithms are exponents, okay? This means that log base A of X is the exponent to which A must be raised to to obtain X, okay? For instance, if I was asked to evaluate log base two of eight, the answer is three. Why is the answer three? Because two raised to the third power equals eight. So, of course, they have these problems here, and they want us to figure this out. So for the first one, you're just evaluating. So you're basically plugging in um, log base 2, and then you're plugging in 32. So you're trying to figure this out. Well, how do you figure that out? Okay. What I, this is how I do it, and, and, and I'm just letting you know that this is how I do it. Okay. What I do is I say log base 2 of 32 equals what? If I don't know how to figure it out in that form, then I switch it into its exponential form. So my base is two, and then these guys swap sides. So the question mark will go up there and the 32 will go over here. So I'm essentially just trying to figure out what the question mark is. Once I know what the question mark is, I will know my answer, okay? So then I go figure out my calculator. Well, two raised to the third power, that's too small. 2 raised to the 4th power, that's too small. 2 raised to the 5th power, that's exactly 32. So that means that my question mark is 5. And so what is log base 2 of 32 equal? It equals 5. Okay. Now this is an arrow saying that that statement means that the question mark is equal to 5. Okay, similarly for this one, if you're looking at it, I would switch it over into its exponential form. I don't know what that equals. So let's put it in its exponential form. Three would be the base and then one gets kicked over to the other side. And so then this would become my exponent, right? You have to have a base and an exponent. So then three to what power equals one? Well, three to the one power, that's too big. So I need to get a smaller exponent. 
three to the zero power, that equals one. So since three to the zero power equals one, that means that the question mark is zero. And so zero is the answer, okay? And sure enough, that's what they have there. Now for part C, same thing. We have log base four of two. And so then we get, um, if we, we don't know what that equals, but if I switch the forms over, it would be the base four with this exponent equal to two. So what exponent is that? I don't know, let's go look. So four raised to the one, that's too big. That's bigger than two. Four raised to the zero, that's one. That's too small. So it's something in between zero and one. What about four raised to the one half, 0.5? That is true, four raised to the 0 0.5, and that is two. Why is that two? Because that's four to the one half. And if you remember one half means this index is two and the exponent is one, which means the square root of four and the square root of four is two, okay? So our answer here is four, 0 0.5, right? either one of those versions of the answer is correct, okay? Now, what about this one? Let's relook at it. So I'm trying to evaluate this, oops, the fraction. So I don't know what that equals, but if I swap the forms over, I get the base 10 with this exponent equal to one over 100. Now I do know that 100 is 10 squared, but look, if I do 10 to the power of two, I get 100, not one over 100. But we know what makes the 100 go downstairs, it's a negative exponent. So 10 to the negative two is that one over 100. So that means my question mark is negative two. And so then negative two is the answer here. And here it tells me that the question mark equals 0 0.5, right? I just didn't write that the last time. Okay, now some more things that we need to know about logarithms, okay? If you see log all by itself, so like log of five, log of 20, whatever, okay? If you see log all by itself and there's no little base down here, okay? That's called the common log, okay? And common logs are actually log base 10. We just don't write the base 10 because it's the common log. Why is 10 the common log? We count in base 10. Once you get to 10, what happens? You go to the next group, which becomes 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Once you get to 20, what happens? You go to the next group, 21, 22, 23, 24. Then you get to 30, and then you go to the next group, right? We live and work and function in base 10. That is the system that we use for money. Um, and it's the system that's used for um, all of the metric system which is used universally, okay? So our whole world functions with base 10. And that's why base 10 is called the common logarithm, okay? So I just want you to know that if you see that like that, it does mean that there's a hidden 10 down here, okay? So if you see nothing, there is a hidden 10 in there. Now we do have some logarithmic properties, okay? We know that any base raised to the zero power will equal one, right? Any base raised to the zero power equals one. They just put it in the long form. We also know that A raised to the one power is A itself, and then they put that in log form. Um, this one is new, okay? This one you need to know. If you have a logarithm and an exponential and the bases match, essentially the logarithms and the exponentials cancel each other out. Why? Because they are inverses of one another, remember? So that's why you end up with just the x. 
And even if it's the other way around, even if you have the exponent of a log, right? The log base and the exponential base just all wipe each other out and you end up with just the x, okay? Um, and then we also have a one-to-one -one property of logs. So if you have log base a of x equal to log base a of y, if the logs are both logs and the bases are both the same, then the only way that this side can equal this side is if those arguments are also the same, okay? So that's your one-to-one -one property again. So here it says, in the same coordinate plane, sketch the graph of both, and they want you to do the two to the power x and then log base two of x. I'm sure they're trying to show you something. So let's go ahead and look at their solution. So for two to the power x, they did these five points. Again, I wouldn't have done this extra one. I would have just done negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. Then what they did was they graphed that one. And here's what's going on here. Because we know that the log is the inverse function of this one, you can obtain all the points just by swapping the x's and the y's. So notice that they swap the x's and the y's. So what does that mean? That means that if I wanted to create a table for, I'm going to do this over here. Here's what they got. They got one fourth, one half, uh, one, two, and four. Yeah, one, two, and four. Okay, they got that. And then if I want to figure out, okay, you're just swapping these because we they are inverses of one another. So you get one fourth and negative two, one half and negative one, one and zero, two and one, and four and two. And so what they did was they plotted all of these points and they came up with this graph. Then they plotted all of these points and they came up with this graph. And if you remember from the um, inverse functions uh, lesson, that when you graph two inverses on the same axes, they end up becoming mirror images of each other over the line y equals x. So here's the line y equals x. And if you notice, they do mirror each other across that invisible line, okay? So it's just to make that point. That was the whole point of that example. So it says the nature of the graph um, in this figure, okay, this is the common log, right? There's no base there. We know that when there's no base there, it's automatically a 10, okay? Um, but it will have one x-intercept and one vertical asymptote. Now, if you remember, okay, if I plug in these three points into the exponential, I get a to the negative one exponent, which means the reciprocal of a. If I plug in zero, I get a to the zero power. Anything to the zero power is one. And if I plug one, a to the one power is just a. Those are the points for the exponentials, okay? If you wanna know the basic points for the logarithms, you literally just swap those out, okay? So I swap these and it becomes one over a negative one, one, zero, and then a one. And so notice that you do always have this intercept one comma zero, right? The one in the middle, okay? And that's all that it's saying. Now, just like the these have a vertical asymptote on the x axis, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, on the x axis, logarithms have a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, okay? So again, more of that reflection going on. And then just the summary, 
notice that because you have this vertical asymptote here, you're never going to touch it. So the domain just goes real close to zero and then all the way to the right to positive infinity. So that's your domain. But this does go down forever, okay? Which means it does go down to negative infinity and this does go up forever. So it will eventually go up to positive infinity. They always have this intercept of one comma zero and we always know that it's one to one and its inverse is the exponential function with base A. Okay, we also know that the y-axis is the vertical asymptote. It, we, it is continuous. Um, and then it does reflect this because that's its inverse. Okay. Um, and then they're just talking about the basic um, information for the other one. If you notice, it's all of these things swapped around. Okay. So let's see what is the next concept. So just like we talked about that base E in exponentials, we have to talk about base E in logarithms, okay? And when you have base E, so we, it was called the natural number. E itself is called the natural number. When you have E to the power X, this is called the natural exponential function. When you have log base E, it's called the natural logarithm, okay? Um, And then the way you read this is natural log of x, or you can say ln of x. L for log, n for natural. So ln of x. They tried to pronounce it here so that you could understand, but it's literally the letter L, n, and then an x, okay? And I'll have a whole bunch of people, and this is so funny, but they say the words ln of x, and then when they type it in the calculator, don't they type in a capital I? This is not a capital I, y'all. It's an L for log, okay? So just make sure you remember that when you try to type in your answers in the computer. I know it looks like a capital I, but it's not a capital I, it's an L, okay? And to prevent that confusion, I normally use a capital L whenever I'm writing natural log, okay? Just because I don't want anybody to think that it is an I, it is not a capital I. It is a lowercase L. But because of that, I'm going to use capital L when I write L in. Okay. Um, so it says the above definition implies that the natural logarithmic function and the natural exponential function are inverses of each other, and they are. So every logarithmic equation can be written to an equivalent exponential equation, okay? And every exponential equation can be written in an equivalent logarithmic equation, okay? So we know that they can go back and forth. Now remember, if you have y equal to ln x, that's the same as saying log base e of x. And if I follow my rule for, for converting, my exponential would be base e and then these guys swap sides. So the Y will be with the E now, and the X will be kicked over to the other side, okay? And that is the equivalent expression. Now notice theirs is the exact same thing. They just have it written on the other sides, okay? So, um, because it's an act, they're inverses of each other, if I were to graph them both on the same axes, you would get this business happening here, which just further proves that they are inverses, the exponential functions and the natural log function. Um, but further, we also want to know how to use a calculator to evaluate these ln functions. So if I'm trying to plug in 2, that means I'm doing ln of 2. Here I'm doing ln of 0 0.3, here ln of negative 1, and it's not minus 1, it's ln of one, negative 1, and then ln of 1 plus square root of 2, okay? So let's see here. Um, we're going to type in the ln is actually right here, and notice that the common log is also here. So you have the natural log. When I hit it once, I get the natural log. When I hit it twice, I get the common log, 
Okay. But I'm doing the natural log, so I'm going to hit it once and then plug in a 2. And I get 0 0.693147181. Now I'm going to type the ln button again and type 0 0.3. I get this number. And then ln of negative 1, it tells me error. Okay. Why is that an error? Because remember, these arguments are going to be your um, exponents. So this one, it just is undefined. And I'm going to explain that a little bit better, OK? So you have ln of negative 1 equal to something. If I convert that over into exponential form, remember this is log base e of negative one. So when I swap over the forms, it's e raised to some power equal to negative one. This base is positive. It doesn't matter what kind of exponent I type in there. If I type in a positive exponent or I type in a negative exponent, notice that the number itself will never be a negative. OK, never. It doesn't matter how big of negative blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter how big that uh, exponent becomes negative. It's still a positive or neutral value. OK, so you have to be very, very, very careful. You can never take the ln or even a regular log of negative one. Why? Remember the domain of log. The domain of log is from zero to infinity and not including zero. So you can only plug in positive numbers for this argument, okay? And that's not a positive number. So that's why it's undefined. Now this one I should be able to do. If I do ln of one plus square root of two, and I get 0 0.88137385. Okay, so you can do these in your calculator. And eventually, once you know how to use your calculator from 5.3, you should be able to type everything that has to do with logs in your calculator. Okay, but you do have to learn another, it's called the change of base formula. Once you learn that in 5.3, you'll be good to go. Okay. So there are some properties, again, we know anything raised to the zero power is one. And so if you convert this into its log form, it would be log base E of one equal to zero. Or instead of log base E, you could write um, natural log. And then E to the one power is E. So that means log base E of E equals one. And that's this. So instead of writing log base E, they just write natural log E. Now. Here, we're going to do, um, if I switch this over, oh, no, E and a log with base E should cancel each other out, so I just get X. And then E and log with a base E should also cancel out, so you just get X. And then this is the one-to-one -one property, so if you have the natural log of this value equal to the natural log of that value, well, they're both taking the natural log, so the only way they could be equivalent to each other is this argument equals that argument. Okay. And so we have example four here. It says students partaking in a psychology experiment attended several lectures on a subject and took an exam. Every month for a year after the exam, the students took retests to see how much of the material they remembered. The average scores for the group are given by the human memory model f of t equal to 75 minus 6 natural log of t plus 1, where t is from 0 to 2, and t is in the time in months, OK? It says, what was the average score on the original exam, which was when t equals 0? So we're basically finding f of 0 when t equals 0. So that's 75 minus 6 natural log of 0 plus 1. And I can plug all of that in my calculator. Remember, this is just a label. So what I'm looking for is this response, 75 minus 6 ln of 0 plus 1, and close it. 
and it tells me it's just 75. So this was the average score um, on the original exam. Now it's saying, what is the average score after two months? So now I'm plugging in two for T. So I'm gonna go back up here and instead of plugging in zero, I'm gonna plug in two. And I get 68 points. Does it tell me to round? It does not. So I'm just gonna say four, zero, eight, dot, 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 because it does not tell me to round. Okay, now the next question says, what was the average score at the end of six months? Now you just plug in six for T. And I believe it actually does the problem on the other page. So see, it plugs this in. I just used the calculator. I didn't even do all that. I just plugged in the zero and then used the calculator. Same thing here, we plugged in the two and then we used the calculator. Here you plug in the six, and then if you use the calculator, you'll get something around there. So if I plug in six, I end up with this, which is um, 63.32. So now we get to our three practice problems. So here it says, write the logarithmic equation in its exponential form. So they want me to swap the form over. So my base is going to stay the base of the exponential, but I need to have an exponent up here and then something over here. So remember, these two numbers should switch sides. So the four should no longer be attached with the 16. The 16 will get kicked to the other side of the four. So 16 will go here. That leaves no other option but to use two as the exponent. Remember, you're going from logarithmic to exponential form. So there should be an exponent in here somewhere. And four squared does equal 16. So this seems like legit. Okay, now for the next one, they want us, they gave us exponential. So this negative four is the exponent. They gave us the exponential form and now they want the logarithmic form. So it's gonna be log with the same base as this exponential. So log base three. Now the negative four should be kicked off to the other side that does not have the three. So it gets kicked off over there. So I have no other choice but for my argument to be one over 81. And I'm trying to squish it in there, but you get the idea. Okay, and it looks like that. There we go. And that is the response. Okay, now here it says use the one-to-one -one property to solve the equation for X. So we already talked about that if you have the ln of something equal to the natural log of something else, the only thing, the only way these two things can be equivalent is if this argument equals this argument. And now in order for me to solve this, it's a quadratic, so I'm going to get it all over to one side you could use the quadratic formula, but I can factor this pretty easily. And so I get x equal to negative six and I get x equal to three. The thing about logarithmic and um, just logarithmic, the thing about logarithmic expressions is, is I told you that the domain was from zero, not including zero to infinity. So you can only have positive arguments, okay? So what you need to do is you need to make sure that neither one of these solutions makes your argument um, negative, okay? It has to be positive in order for it to be a good solution, okay? So if I were to plug in um, negative six into here, I would get ln of negative six squared plus three times negative six. And so then I get ln of 36 minus 18. And so then I do get ln of 18. And that is okay, that is um, equivalent, right? So this one does check out. So I'm not saying that your solution cannot be negative. I'm saying that these numbers should not make your arguments negative, okay? Now, if we go try the positive three, If 
we get ln of nine plus nine, which is equal to ln of 18. So this one also checks out, okay? And so since both of them check out, I would type both of those answers in the computer. It does happen that sometimes one of the answers does make an argument negative. And in that case, it cannot be one of your solutions. It just gets omitted from the answer. If you have something else that works, then that's your only answer. If you have nothing else that checked out, then you have no answer. The answer is no solution, okay? But this is the end of um, 5.2.